I'm Matt. I'm a music producer, guitar player, worship director, and et cetera here in Phoenix, Arizona. And this is my mandolin. So I just did a video on using the HX stomp from Line 6 as a acoustic processing rig and making my acoustic guitar sound better using it. That's what I got it for. But of course, once I had it, I was like, I should plug some other stuff into it. So... This is my mandolin patch that I just debuted this live a few weeks ago, and it's the best my mandolin has ever sounded live, so I thought I would share it. It's some of the same principles as the acoustic patch. Some of it's really different. This one's already dialed in, so I'm just going to show you what I did because I spent a lot of time on it the other day. But I also am going to try and dial in a banjo patch, which I have not looked at ahead of time, so that'll be right now during this video. I'll try it. So let me headphone up so that I'm just hearing the direct signal from this and not its live sound. So this is the direct signal straight out of my mandolin pickup. And I think it's a K and K twin is what's in this. It's whatever came with it when I got it. So it's not terrible. It's nowhere near as bad as my acoustic sounds without some processing. So the first thing I did here was compressor. It's an LA studio comp. I'm trying to treat this whole process as if I was recording a mandolin. What would I do to it? And thinking compression, EQ, a little bit of tube pre or something. So this is without the compressor. And the idea here is that when I'm strumming, I want it a little closer in volume to when I'm picking. So... Here's with the compressor. I'm pressing rather a lot. I have peak reduction up here at eight and doing some makeup gain. So it's compressing a lot, but mandolin, there's a really big volume difference between when you're just strumming and when you're like. So I wanted those a little closer together in volume. And then let's see, I have a low high cut here, not cutting any highs, cutting lows below 130. Here's without it. So I don't know how audible that is. There's just nothing below 100 something on a mandolin that matters. I'm rolling off some lows to get rid of like any low rumble or like palm mute buildup. And then this EQ is boosting a little 250 actually because there's not a lot of low end on a mandolin and I wanted to make it a little more full sounding. And then cutting a lot of 500, one and a little tiny bit of two. Anytime I'm dealing with a pickup amplified acoustic instrument and I'm always looking at that 1k and then the, the frequencies right near it. That's always a problem. Here's without those EQ moves. Oh, it looks like I'm also boosting some 16 hertz for, for tinkly high end. I don't think I mentioned that before. And then I have yet a third EQ here. This is the parametric and I'm boosting a bit of 340 again for warmth and like size. And then 855, I'm cutting a bit. On acoustic, I always cut around 800. On most guitars, it's boomy, like cardboardy frequency. So... And then I'm boosting some high end at 13. So again, just more like plinky sparkly frequencies there. So here's with all the EQs off. So you can hear, hopefully, a lot of that nasty mid-range is scooped out. And then I'm actually boosting some low mids and a lot of highs to give it the kind of the sparkly sound I wanted to have without any of the annoying pickup stuff in there.
And then this is one that I briefly messed with in the acoustic video, but I love it on mandolin. This is the Studio Tube Pre. So without it, it's like this. So I feel like it's adding maybe a little saturation, some warmth. I did some extreme EQ moves before this, so it's a little scooped going in. I feel like the tube pre is smoothing things out and making it sound less messed with. And then the other one that I only just found when I was dialing in this mandolin preset and I'm really liking is there's a reverb here on the end, dynamic ambience. And I'm not using it as like an effect reverb. I don't want it to, it's not like this or something, that, that's my new neighbor pedal. What I want it to do is just sound a little bit more like the mandolins in a room and less like it's like plugged straight into your ears. Here's without it. And here's with. So I have it pretty short. The smallest room, just a little bit of pre-delay, mix at 41%. And I did some, the low and high cuts are in a little. But I do feel like it makes it sound a little more like the mandolins, like in a, a, a space and not like right up in your ear. And that's really all I have going on here. There is a volume boost that I've attached to one of my stomps on the stomp, one of the buttons, so that if I needed to take a solo, I could... I jump up about six or seven dB to jump out of a mix, go. And then blend back in. And then I do have a delay here. I don't really know why. That's probably not like necessary for mandolin, but I had the, the block free and I never don't want to delay, so. So that's my mandolin patch. I love it. I'm so happy with it. What I want to do next is see if I can do something similar for my banjo, which I have never plugged into this thing before. So let's take a look at that. Okay, I've switched to banjo. This is going to be the same idea. I just want to see what I can do with the stomp to make this sound better plugged in. But I have not pre-looked at this one, so I don't know. So this is got, what is it called? It's a Fishman Rare Earth pickup that my tech that I work with installed for me. Doesn't sound bad. It's a little dull. And I'm going to see what I can do with it. I've copied down my mandolin setting as a starting point and then turned everything off. Let's see what the studio compressor does here. So I do like that, although compressing is bringing out some of the mid-range frequencies that I know I'll need to deal with. Let me reduce the compression on that. I'll see if I leave that compressor on or not. That's kind of annoying me. I, I backed it off and then low cut. I don't know quite where that needs to be. I'll put that at like 150 for now. So we got to do some EQing here. This is sounding a bit rough. Maybe cut some 250. What's 500 hertz doing here? I don't think that's the one I want, although I am going to cut it. Is it 1K? I'll bet it's 1K. 
It's always 1K with these acoustic instruments. So I'm cutting a bunch of 1K here in a little 500 and 250. Maybe some 2K as well. Boosting some 8K seems to help the high end cut through a little. Not by 12K, I just wanted to see what it sounded like. Okay, so here's without any of those EQ moves I just made. And here's with. That's a lot better already. Let's see what we can do with the parametric EQ. So I'm gonna try boosting some 10K here. Sometimes I do that in the studio. I like that with a little more 10k as well. I think what this needed was a lot less mids and a lot more high end. So Now that it's sounding better, I wonder if I could bring the compressor back up. Okay, so I like that. And then this Studio Tube Pre, let's see what it does on here. Okay, I think similarly to the mandolin, I think it's warming it up some. So here's without the Tube Pre. And then let's try the dynamic ambience too. Here's direct. I think it's more noticeable than it was on the mandolin, so I'm gonna back off the mix a bit. So I'm reasonably happy with that for just spending a few minutes on this right now. So here's all of that stuff off. And then here's with the processing. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah, the HX Stomp is the best at EQing, compressing, fine-tuning uh, acoustic instruments so that they actually sound good live. So anyway, hope that was helpful. If you play one of these instruments or just find it interesting, I would definitely recommend the Stomp as a live solution for virtually anything. Thanks for watching.